Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I just want to do a little bit of a exploration into a failure that we had earlier this week. And this is such a perfect example of volts don't equal amps. Okay, and what we have to demonstrate this, this is a power supply that comes out of a, uh, a surgical light. It came out of an operating room. And this particular one, it showed that it had voltage but yet it wouldn't light up a little bulb like this, which should take little to nothing to light this bulb up. So let's, let's talk about this power supply a little bit. So like most other power supplies, it takes AC in and it kicks out DC. But on the front of the light housing, there's a potentiometer, which actually I'm synthesizing right here with this little, uh, it's what, an eight and a half ohm, 8.2 ohm resistor. So that way there I have a constant potential value going into this guy here because the potentiometer basically adjusts the voltage that's coming out of this guy up or down. And that's what gives you the dimness or brightness of the operating room bulbs. So in order to set this up here safely in my environment so I can test it, I have an isolation transformer set up here, so I should have 60 volts per leg. And that way there, it's now safe for me to sit here and operate with because normally this guy here is going to be grounded on the chassis. All right, so it's going to have a ground and it's going to potentially be safe that way. And now here I have it sitting on a silicone mat, so I don't have that luxury of, you know, directly grounding it. The easiest and safest thing to do is to use my isolation transformer system so anyway here uh, you can see I have my inputs my AC on this side here I've got my monitoring which is uh, one of them is for my LEDs that say hey I'm turned on the other one is my um, potentiometer which screws in here and that adjusts the uh, voltage output so that's these middle guys so if you see this resistor it's a 5 watt resistor that's what it's doing sitting there because I don't know how much current that, that little tiny potentiometer disperses. It's obviously not going to be very much, just to be safe. I used a 5 watt resistor. And over here, I've got some other doodads hanging off here, to which honestly I have no clue what it does. And it doesn't matter, because when we come into an operating room and we're measuring, I myself made a mistake, okay? I popped one of these fantastic little, I think they're 20 or $30 bulbs, because what I did is, um, while this was in circuit, because there was no way of killing the power to this in the room. There wasn't. I, I had to kill the main breaker to the room in order to do that. So what I could do is I put my meter on ohms, and I came over here, and I was measuring the potentiometer while it was still connected. And there's actually a, a bus that it plugs into. So it's not the easiest thing to isolate, you know, to test independently. So what I did is I put my multimeter here, and I tested the ohms while it was live. And I know it's not the best thing to do, but you know, since I have two of these sitting next to each other, it's one thing I can do to differentiate why this guy here is not powering up and yet that one is. So when I did that, my multimeter changed the values. Okay, in other words, it changed the values of the resistance of the potentiometer and basically told this guy to ramp up the voltage more and more and more. So behind me, the OR light was getting brighter and brighter and brighter until it just melted one of these guys. And I knew that was a potential problem. So anyway, uh, I had to kill the whole entire room, which was horrible to do. Um, mind you, there was no patient in the OR room at that time. But... Um, Anyway, I learned my lesson and I would not use my multimeter to test the potentiometer the same way again because this is an older technology. This this one here, uh, it's, it's a very stupid circuit, all right? It will go to max and max is, you know, very dangerous, you know, considering it's only meant to be 24 volts. It might have gotten 30, 40 volts. I have no clue. It might have went way more than that. But I do know if you put like zero resistance or when, when my meter's on ohms, it actually kicks out a slight voltage from one probe to the next. So that's going to mess with it all in itself. So anyway, uh, I messed that up. And, but I knew that there was something else going on with this guy. So we changed out 
this guy here because I seen a weird, extremely high voltage where there shouldn't have been. So over here on my output, let's see, I'm on DC, yes. So over here on my output, uh, with the old potentiometer connected, I was sitting at 53 volts. Now this is only, what, a 24 volt power supply. And I was sitting at 53 volts, which is absurdly high, okay? Um, and as you can see here, on my multimeter, you see it flipping all around. My, my leader meter leads are pretty solid, but you can see it's flipping all around. Why is it doing that? It's doing that <laughs> partially because it's a defective power supply, but also because there's not a load, okay? So that's one thing that you have to remember when you're testing power supplies, you have to have a load in order to get a solid and stable voltage reading. Now, a lot of power supplies, like some of these other ones that I have floating around here, you don't necessarily need a load because there's a synthetic load embedded into the circuitry. But some of them, like this one, especially since it's got a variable output, it needs a load in order for you to get a good reading. So all this is coming to short to tell you that now I have it here. I knew that something was wrong with it and I couldn't prove it in the circuit where it was. So I brought it home because here's what's going on. This is a 12 volt motor and you just seen that it has 20 volts sitting currently on this rail. But I take this 12 volt motor and I go to connect it. It's, it's ticking and barely spinning. Barely at all. Just to be sure, let's, let's put my meter on here and let's reconnect the motor. Take a look at that. This tiny little motor, which is a good motor, it should be spinning like hell right now because a 12 volt motor in a 20 volt rail, it should be just winding all over the place, but it's not. Notice what it's doing. As soon as I put a load on it, it kills my 20 volt rail, it just kills it. So guys, that just goes to show you, just cause you have voltage where you say you're supposed to have voltage does not necessarily mean that your device is good, okay? Now, for all I know, there might be, you know, much bigger issues on this. And like I said, I've got it hooked up just to be safe with my isolation transformer because you never know. This thing could light me up for all I know. If I were to plug this guy here into the wall and I were to touch the, the outside casing, I might get lit. Uh, you don't know. And I'm not going to take that, that chance. But anyway, guys, just to show you, uh, I've got a constant, um, constant resistance. It's got 20 volts on it. As soon as I connect a load, which is a good load, it's a good motor. Um, as soon as I connect it, it absolutely kills it, brings it down to basically nil. And it's just a bad power supply. <laughs> it's that's all there is to it. Maybe I will open this guy up. If you can imagine, this guy's kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt to get into. Maybe I will open it up and take a deeper dive into what's really going on into it. We'll see. But anyway, this was a problem. We did change out the power supply and it did solve the problem when we changed out the power supply. But this is just a little bit of a deep dive into what's really going on. So just because you got volts doesn't mean you got amps. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.